field that needs installed on the tractor for this winter. Freshly uncovered from its summer break. Right. But the break ends now. I am giving you an overview of the plow and all the parts needed for installation. This is a Ford 1200 tractor, but other models I'm sure are similar. The front bumper needs removed before you install the plow. I have left the bumper off in years past, but I needed to push a car this summer, and I put the front bumper back on. You see I cheated, I didn't put all the bolts back in. To make life easy, you can carefully pull up over the plow with the tractor. Just put it in low range and carefully work closer towards the plow. We're looking at the bolt washers, lock washer and nut that holds the plow to the frame of the truck. Diagram is included there for your reference there on the proper order of installation. The mounting point on the plow sits up between the bracket on the tractor there between two pieces of metal. It's just enough room to squeeze it up in between. To position the plow under the tractor, the floor jack is best used and it makes life very easy and you can go up and down gradually as you need to. Then install the bolt if one of the washers on and the bushing from the inside of the tractor and you want to, as I'm doing, push it in with the thread stick towards the outside. You want to install the other washer, the lock washer, and the nut. Using a wrench, hold the bolt head and tighten with a half inch drive ratchet. As tight as you can make it, I've never had any trouble with it, ever wanting to come off for anything, or bind up to being too tight, just so I can say as tight as you can, tighten it up. And just repeat for the other side, set up there with the bolt washer and bushing, and then after you install that, install the washer, lock washer nut. You may have to, like I say, use a lift the jack a little more, let it down, perhaps work with a punch there, a lining punch to get it to line up, but once you find the magic spot, it'll slip right in place. Now we want to install the bracket in the front hydraulic cylinder. You can see the bolts, nuts, and washers in the photo, and it's going to include a diagram like the plow mounting of the order in which everything goes. You can either use the upper holes in the bracket on the hydraulic pump on the plow or the lower. I have tried both over the years, but I find the upper ones work best. It lets the plow it don't sit up as high, but it gives you, when it's cold out and the hydraulic fluid's thick there, it don't have to travel as far up and down, and it still has enough clearance to satisfy my needs, and I feel it works better, but that is up to you. For the summer months, I always rest the front of the plow on cement blocks. And I'm going to use the floor jack in the middle of the plow and remove those and let the floor jack under it so it can be positioned accordingly till we get the plow, the mounting bracket and the hydraulic cylinder bolted up. Next, you need to remove the hydraulic hose that routes around without the plow. It just more or less makes a loop, but using the 11 16th wrench and a 7 8 inch wrench. The 11 16th goes on the end of the hose to hold it. The 7 8 goes on the union where it turns and turn it loose. The clearance is not good on it and once you get so far you should be able to finish taking it off just with your thumb and index finger. Now time's come to install the hydraulic levers that Operate the plow up and down, right to left, left to right. You just want to do this, put, uh, I always just put the bolt down in from the top and put the nut and the washer on from the bottom. Yeah, in the photo I didn't put the washer on. I dropped it, but I later installed it after making the video. Next, where I disconnected the hose off the tractor, the hard to reach, I always put a quick connect on it 
for the plow operation and then hook it up to the hydraulic controls with the quick connect fit. I use a quick connect on the outer end, but there is not clearance to, for it to work. Before installing the hydraulic hose again, be sure to coat the threads with sealant. I use the sealant there, Teflon, and the jar. I don't like the Teflon tape. That also would work. I've never been a real big fan of it. I find it hard to work with, but that also, if you don't mind it, go ahead and use it. Tighten the hose fitting as far as possible by hand, and then finish with the two wrenches, the 11 16th to hold the hose, and the 8 to 7 8. I want to take and remove the bolt from the tractor frame. This serves two purposes, and then after you remove it, Take and get your hydraulic hoses and the clamp that's on the hoses and put the bolt through. And then reinstall the bolt through and tighten it in where you took it out to hold the hydraulic hoses up. And just make sure all everything's not getting in the way that the hoses aren't pinching between the plow body and the frame of the tractor, or body of the tractor, whatever you want to say. I know my hoses are getting rough looking, dry rotted. They look that way. I've had this for six years, about the same, but one day in the middle of the snowstorm, but of course, they're bound to break. Now the moment of truth. watching this video and be sure to check out some of my other tractor videos and car videos and if you like this please like and also please consider subscribing to the channel new small channel but not, well not so new I've been posting videos on and off for six years but I've become more serious into it and I can say the subscription be appreciated I'd appreciate it and so would my hmm, dog family here.